Hello, everybody. I'm Alexis Brink. I'm a TAP. And today it is my privilege to introduce you to Dr. Wayne Hart, TSTA and TAPI. He has applied transactional analysis for over 50 years. He has practiced as a psychologist, marriage counselor, and coach. And Dr. Hart has held a senior leader positions in different organizations, as well as management and senior faculty roles in the Center for Creative Leadership. He has always relied on TA to help understand himself, others, and to assess the dynamics in organizations. And a very warm, warm welcome to you, Dr. Hart. Thank you. So a few questions, because you have a very exciting workshop coming up on November 19 from 12 mm -hmm. to 2 Eastern. And so this is a little bit for people to get to know you. What drew you to transactional analysis initially? Well, it was my former wife. She insisted that if I didn't get into counseling with her counselor, she'd leave me. Well, I was pretty motivated by that. And the counselor was a TA practitioner. And that was my introduction. And it worked. Oh, wonderful. Oh, great. And so who as uh, trainers influenced you most and why? I, I think really two people come to mind. Number one, I have to mention Bill Collins who was my primary uh, sponsor and trainer for um, the, the certifications in the 1970s. Um, two things. One, he was a great model for um, the training and marathon procedures. But also, he had a very uh, expressive child ego state. He, he was, in, functionally speaking, he was, he was a lot of fun. And I needed that as a model in my life because I tended to be really serious about stuff. So I'm thankful to him for that. And then I would also include uh, a magical moment at Mount Madonna with, with uh, Bob Goulding when he uh, launched me into a redecision that really changed my life. Okay, wonderful. Well, I hope we, we'll learn a little bit more about that in your workshop too. I'm curious now. But the next question, because it's a short interview, what is the Center for Creative Leadership model? Well, uh, the Center for Creative Leadership is a global uh, leadership development training or organization. They do research and publishing. And one of their important parts of uh, intellectual property is this feedback model they call uh, uh, situation behavior impact, where you give people feedback, you give them what the context was, describe their behavior, and then talk about the impact of that behavior. Uh, that was their model when I joined in 1999. And as I'll talk about in the program, uh, I discovered that uh, our uh, participants who were very sophisticated people uh, were having trouble with it. And in the process of doing that, I did some research and found that there were at least three other forms of feedback that were essential in organizational leadership. So that resulted in a total of four, and I published that information in a workbook at the center. I'm not sure how widely it's used, but I do get um, residuals every year, so they must be selling and <laughs> they must find it valuable since my retirement. Um, so uh, the, the workshop will look at those four forms of uh, feedback, even though impact is the main focus of the center. I see. Thank you. And why can it be important to give feedback about behavior? And yeah, in what kind of settings is it appropriate? What set? Well, let me do settings first. Um, there, there really is, is no, there's kind of a myth that you only give feedback in, in very restricted ways. But when we look at feedback a way, the way we will in the program, um, there, there's no particular setting where it's appropriate or inappropriate. It depends on the kind of feedback you're giving and what the conditions are. For instance, uh, you can give impact uh, feedback uh, to uh, somebody when you're giving them a award in front of a crowd of a thousand people. Uh, and on, on the other hand, if you're uh, in an organizational setting where you're having to uh, uh, confront somebody on inappropriate behavior, you might want to do that in private. So 
situation is, is conditional upon the type of feedback that you want to give. Uh, that, that's how you determine the setting. Mm -hmm. And you, so you will make these distinctions. You will uh, help us to that, right. yes. define that. Great. And can you explain uh, feedback as a communication skill and what is constructive feedback? Okay. <laughs> uh, well, as a communication skill, basically it's deciding what kind of information might be valuable to the receiver of the feedback and or meet a need that the giver of the feedback happens to have, and then deciding what form it should take, uh, and then uh, giving the feedback in the most effective way you can. Um, the question about constructive feedback is interesting. Um, once again, it's not about the contact or the text, uh, sorry, the content or the setting. Uh, constructive feedback is if it's de delivered in a timely way and it's from an I'm okay, you're okay life position, and it is a good fit for the condition and the state of mind that the receiver's in. All those are judgment calls that a person needs to, to learn to be able to make in order to be able to give the feedback. Um, if those things are met, well, then the feedback is constructive because it does one of two or both things. It either empowers the receiver to have information that is valuable to them, or it uh, builds a better relationship, and hopefully both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you just gave an example to come both come from an uh, okay, okay position. So this is one of the ways you use TA, um, you use TA in this feedback. I, I'm just curious, how else can you use uh, TA to give feedback as a communication scale? Can you give another example? Sure. Um, basically, the idea would be to uh, monitor yourself and being aware you're in an I'm okay, you're okay life position, which has a lot to do with being in your structural adult and perhaps nurturing child, depending on the circumstances, and then selecting the uh, appropriate functional ego state. Um, so functionally, you, you might be uh, rather nurturing in your, in your approach, or you might be playful in your approach, depending on the content and the circumstances that you're trying to, to address. Um, and then studying the receiver in the same way, um, you know, what ego state is he or she in? Uh, what are the conditions that he or she is facing that might impact their receptivity to uh, with the information that you want to give them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. So we can really use these basic TA concepts. Yes, absolutely. And what will students uh, who attend walk away with? What will the little things that they can use in their practice after? Well, we'll uh, be offering uh, an understanding of the four types of feedback, which are impact, direction, uh, contingency, and attribution. There's a teaser just to find out what those mean when we, we have the workshop. So understanding those four and uh, some practice during the workshop. It's a workshop, not a lecture. Uh, some practice at using uh, especially impact feedback because it is trickier than one might expect. It takes a little bit of work to uh, to master that skill. So those those are the two main things that folks will walk away with. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And also, because I've known you from certain committees, you are very involved with USADA. You're on several committees. And can you just briefly explain how you are involved with USADA? Uh, yes, I, I uh, serve on the uh, coordinating council and uh, chair or coordinate uh, a committee, which is the membership committee. And then I, uh, which is, is new, we've only had that committee for uh, several months now. And so we're getting it launched, getting it established. Uh, I'm also serve on the structure and function committee, which uh, takes a look at the overall organizational structure and operation and what we're trying to do and who's responsible for what and uh, I also serve on the education committee, where we think about what kinds of services the organization can provide. And we also uh, take a look at the um, uh, TAP training program, all three levels, what the requirements are and uh, whether or not there are any needed changes. Uh, and then uh, kind of related to that committee, I have the pleasure of uh, chairing the uh, TAPI collaboration. That's a a new uh, 
gathering of all the TAPIs that are able to attend our meetings to talk about what's going on in the organization and the community we serve and, and how can we as a group of senior trainers um, offer more benefits to both. Great. So it's very important and wonderful that the community has an opportunity to get to know you better in this workshop. So we hope that many of you will join us November 19 from 12 till 2 and join in Dr. Hart's workshop. Right. And by so, the way, that's 12 to 2 Eastern time. 12 to 2 Eastern time. So we hope to see many. And thank you, Dr. Hart, so much for this interview. You're welcome. It was a pleasure to be here. And thank you for all your work on behalf of the organization. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.